Welcome students in the series of scalar and vector quantities. Now we are going to start uh, this topic from the chapter motion in a plane. It's important for the CBSE need as well as for the IIT experience. Now move with this topic. Like to start this topic, let us revise some terms. I think you are familiar students with this term like weight, height, length, pressure, temperature, the time also. So what are these quantities? Have you heard in the daily life uh, and you know about these terms are somehow related with the physics. So what is the mean of that? Do you know like what these quantities are called in the physics? Yes, exactly. They are nothing but they are physical quantities. So what are physical quantities? The quantities which can be measured that are called as physical quantities. And uh, what kind of uh, things we can measure like a length, mass, velocity, temperature, area, volume, density, etc. These kind of things we can easily measure. And if I'm talking about non-physical quantities, a physical quantity which can't be measured like affection, love, angry, hunger, pain, etc. So how this uh, physical quantities can be classified? In this topic, we are studying like the classification of physical quantities. Physical quantities can be classified by two things like a fundamental quantity and the derived quantities. Physical quantity also be classified as a scalar and vector. So now we start with the first to know about a scalar and vector, first, let us understand about the term magnitude and direction of the physical quantities. So let us first understand the term magnitude. Magnitude. The countable or miserable things. Like, as you can see this we can count. And expressed in the terms of number. Like for example 10 kg, 8 newton. So what are 10? 10 is a number. And 8 is a number. With that, we have a unit like kg, that means we are something we are talking about the mass, and newton, that means we are as we are just talking about the force. So here 10 is a number and kg is a unit. Here 8 is a number and newton is a unit. So uh, like let us understand some scalar quantities with an example. Like the first question, what is the distance between the cyber, cyber tower to Kukatpali? Kukatpali, so distance will be 10 km. So what is the 10 magnitude and what is the kilometer unit? So like physical quantities which are completely specified by these two terms like magnitude and unit, these are called as the scalar quantities. But if we didn't not speak about the direction. So, let us understand vector quantities with an example. Same thing if we are just talking about with the direction like 10, okay, kilometer, okay. But if we are just adding the direction also, this will be suddenly converted into the new quantity which we are called as a vector quantity. So, what is 10? Magnitude. What is a kilometer unit? And what's the mean of a north? That means showing the direction. So, a physical quantities which are completely specified by magnitude, unit and direction. These are called as vector quantities. The blue arrow indicates the displacement and the red arrow indicates the distance. What is the mean of a scalar quantities and vectors? So, a scalar quantity is a quantity that has only magnitude and has no specific direction in space. Only magnitude situation where magnitude alone is sufficient. And this is a called as scalar. Scalar quantities, for example, length, volume, time, mass, uh, has a magnitude and a specific direction called as a vector. So a vector quantity is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction in the space. For example, of vector quantities like a velocity, force displacement torque let us revise what a scalar and quantities vector quantities are so magnitude is a scalar magnitude with direction is vector 
representation of a vector. Displacement of a body from A to B is represented as a arrow. So symbolic, uh, symbolically we can write as a vector AB. This arrow is arrow actually showing about the uh, not uh, actually showing about the like vector quantities means the quantity which have a direction. Okay. The length of the arrow actually is specified about the magnitude and the direction of the arrow def defines the direction of the terms. So vector AB if it is taking the magnitude so it will be have a scalar. Now types of vector. Let us understand uh, some uh, now some special type of uh, vectors. First equal vectors. Consider vector A, B and vector C, D having the same magnitude and direction. This will be called as a vector quantities as you can see over here like vector A and A and B and C and D in between the gaps are same. The value of a D is same. If I am assuming this will be a D, so D will be same. This will be called as an equal vector. So from here we can say that vector AB is equals to vector CD or vector P is equals to vector Q. Uh, in a conclusion in a concept we can say two or more vectors having the same magnitude and same direction irrespective of their position in a space are called as equal vectors. I hope you understand students. Next opposite or negative or anti parallel vector. So if I'm talking about vector A, A and B and C and D, as you can see, the distance are same, but the directions are opposite. So from here, we can say directionally vector A, uh, B is equals to minus of vector C. But in the magnitude, they are equal. And same with the vector P is equals to minus of vector Q. So, if any two vectors of a same type which are equal in magnitude but opposing in the direction are called as opposite or negative vectors. The unit vectors. A vector having a unit magnitude in a given direction is called a unit vector. Consider a vector A. So, a unit vector is equal to the given vector divided by magnitude of that vector is represented as a cap. So, A gap is equals to vector A divided by uh, mod of vector A. Zero vector. A vector having zero magnitude and with no specific direction is called a zero vector or a null vector. It is represented by vector O. For example, the velocity of the particle at rest. The position of the vector, position vector of a particle at O is it. Rectangular uh, unit vector. Consider a coordinate axis system so here we are, i have taken the x y and z quantities in the x axis the direction of a unit vector is i cap means i cap represent the unit vector along x axis similarly j cap so j cap represents the unit vector along y axis and k cap represent the unit vector along z axis so in a rectangular unit vector are unit vectors along the positive direction r of the axis of the coordinate system six position vectors a vector which is represent the position of a point in a magnitude and direction with respect to the coordinate system is called as position vector. Now consider a point P in a space having a position 2 comma 3. As you can see this diagram. So P at 2 comma 3. These are called as a position vector at a point P with respect to coordinate axis. So what is the value of P in the x along x axis as you can see this is x this is a y so we can we, we can write as a 2 i cap plus 3 k cap 3 j cap and in the direction of O because this will be lies at the horizon so this will be 0 i cap 
plus zero k j gap. As you can see, this will be as you can see, this will be lies at origin. So, what is the difference between O vector OP is equals to? So, vector OP is equals to vector P minus vector O. This will becomes 2i cap plus 3j cap again. Third, the unit vector of vector A. 1i cap plus 2j cap plus 3k cap is. We have these options. So, how may we can calculate the value of the unit vector? For unit vector, Vector A is equals to vector A, okay, uh, sorry, A cap is equals to, because we have to calculate the unit vector, A cap divided by mod of vector A. So, how we can calculate the value of a vector A, which is a given already, 1i cap plus 2j cap plus 3k cap. And for finding the value of a mod of A, we just taking the square of this term. So, 1 is square plus 2 is square plus 3 square that comes 1i cap plus 2j cap plus 3k cap divided by 1 plus 4 plus 9 so this will becomes under root 14 so from here we can see the correct option is option a okay this will be the processor as i told you so what what here the solution is the so same which I did like vector a is equals to 1i cap plus 2j cap plus 3k cap and a is equals to vector of uh, under root of 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square which comes plus minus 14 and the value of a cap is equals to vector a by mod of vector a that comes this value now moving ahead with the next question the magnitude of vector p is equals to x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap is so under root x square plus y square plus z square second we have under root x square plus y square minus z square third we have x square minus y square plus z square to the root last we have x square minus y square minus z square to the power root so again we are starting the magnitude factor that r comes under root rx square plus ry square plus rz square. Next question the magnitude of vector a comes. This we calculated I think already the answer comes to root 14. We just taking the square root of all the factor. So, how we can do the addition of vector? Consider vector AB having a magnitude 3 unit and pointing towards the right. As you can see, addition of vector when they have same direction. So, this is 3 unit and the same PQ we have with the same direction but the unit is a 5 unit and the pointing towards right. If we are just combining, we get a maximum length. This will be x to y. They have a resultant unit which is called as A unit. So resultant vector will be the summation of AB plus PQ which will become vector XY. Has a magnitude 8 newton and also the point towards the right. Magnitude of the resultant vector gives the algebraic sum of the two vectors. And the direction of resultant vector is same is given as a vector. Other hand, addition of the vectors when they are in the opposite direction. Consider a vector AB having a magnitude 3 unit and pointing towards left. If I just added this factor into this PQ, so consider a PQ vector having a magnitude 5 unit and pointing towards right. What will be the answer? So magnitude of the resultant vector is gives as the algebraic subtraction of two vectors. That means the direction of the resultant vector must be the same as the bigger one. So resultant of a vector x y has a magnitude 2 unit. It is also point towards the right. Now addition of two vectors. The first one is this geometrical method. Third triangle law, uh, polygon law and the parallelogram law. In triangular, triangle law of vector addition. 
statement when two vectors of the same type of same type are represented magnitude and direction by two sides of a triangle taken in the certain order clockwise or anti clockwise then their resultant vector is represented in the magnitude and direction by third side of the triangle taken in the positive opposite direction this is the first vector second vector and third one is the resultant vector so let us consider an example vector p vector q and we have combined these two vectors so take two vectors as a side of a triangle in a certain order so starting point of the second vector is q is at ending point of the first vector p then resultant vector is represented as a third side of the triangle the resultant starts from the starting point of vector first vector and uh, end at ending point second vector vector r so polygon law of vector addition the polygon law is useful to find the resultant of the number of vector graphically for example there's some statement if a number of vectors are represented in the magnitude and direction by the side of a polygon taken in order their resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the closing side of the polygon taken in the reverse order so as you can see vector v1 vector v2 and vector v3 with that vector v4 with that vector v5 and here we have addition of all the vectors we get the resultant vector vector v so v1 v2 v3 and v4 v5 are the number of vectors different angle magnitude or different magnitude and acting in a different orientation the five vectors are represented in the magnitude and direction by five side of hexagon taken in anti clockwise order now next one is the parallelogram law of addition statement is if two vectors of the same type acting simultaneously at the point are represented in magnitude and direction along two adjustable side of the poly uh, parallelogram then their resultant vector is represented in the magnitude and direction by the diagonal drawn from the same point as you can see vector p vector q and here is the resultant of these two and the direction resultant will be vector p plus vector q now here we will take the derivation part let us p and vector q be the two vectors having angle between them as you can see here this will be vector p vector q okay an angle is always at the mid now for completing this parallelogram which is taken we make a two strings let vector ac is equals to vector r to be resultant vector and let r makes the angle alpha with p so construct ce perpendicular to the ab now ac square is equals to ae square plus ec square now after applying this formula we get the value of ac square okay so from here bc square is equals to be square plus ce square so be comes bc plus bc cos theta and ce comes bc sin theta so using pythagoras theorem we can take out the value of r square which comes p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta and the value of r comes under root p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta okay and in the form of alpha if you want to take out the value of tan alpha this will be ce by ae the value of ce divided by ae will be ab plus ba now CE and BE. We can put this value 
easily. BE comes BC cos theta and CE comes BC sin theta. So from here, we can take out the value of a tan alpha, which will be BC sin theta divided by AB plus BC cos theta. Tan alpha comes Q sin theta divided by B plus Q cos theta, where alpha comes tan inverse Q sin theta divided by B plus Q cos theta. Here, alpha is the direction of vector. Direction is same. So when two parallel two vectors P and Q are added, the resultant vector will have some magnitude which will be R is equals to under root P square plus Q square plus 2 P Q R cos theta. And resultant vector makes an angle with respect to the side AB. So alpha is equals to 10 inverse cos side theta divided by P plus Q sine theta. Now special case are this like when theta is equals to 0. The vector will be parallel in the nature and the resultant will be under root p square plus 2 pq cos 0 plus t q square that comes resultant p square plus q square plus 2 pq or we can write as r is equals to p plus q so tan alpha is equals to q sine 0 divided by p plus q sine 0 and this comes the value of sine 0 is equals to 0 hence alpha comes 0 now moving on to a special case second when theta is equals to 180 the diagram will be look like anti parallel vector so in this case the theta becomes 180 degree again we put all these value here like p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta and r is equals to then p square plus q square minus 2 pq after a while r get p minus q so tan alpha is equals to p minus q heat hai na? so q sin theta q sine 180 divided by p plus q cos 180 so from here we can calculate the value of alpha which is 0 and alpha is equals to 180 now third special case when theta is equals to 90 so mutually they are perpendicular to each other for that case theta 90 is equals to 0 so p square plus q square there is again there is no need for the calculation part because alpha is equals to tan inverse q sine 90 degree divided by p plus q sine 90 but the thing is that we have tan alpha is equals to q by p now moving ahead with the multiple choice question if vector p plus vector q is equals to r then vector r is always greater than p Vector r is always equals to p plus q. Vector r is never equals to p plus q. And r may be less than p plus q. Solution we have, if q is a null vector, option a is impossible. If angle between the p and q is other than 90 degree, then not possible. If the angle p and q is 90 degree, position are not same. And if r may be less than, may be possible may be possible for a q or p from parallelogram theta becomes 180 and vector r is equals to vector p minus vector q second the maximum and the minimum resultant of two forces are in the ratio 4 ratio 3 the forces are in the ratio 7 ratio 1 1 ratio 5 4 ratio 7 and 3 ratio 7 so maximum resultant you know f1 plus f2 and minimum resultant f1 minus f2 what you have to do you just put this value in the equation f1 plus f2 divided by f1 minus f2 is equals to 4 by 3 from here we can calculate the value of f1 which is 7 times f2 third if two vectors having same magnitude in the ratio 5 ratio 8 their resultant have maximum and minimum magnitude in the ratio 13 ratio 3 3 ratio 1 8 ratio 5 or 6 ratio 5 Solution we have p by q is equals to 5 by 8 is equals to q. The value of a q is 13 p divided by 3, which is a 13 by 3. The resultant of two forces, one double to the other magnitude, is perpendicular to the smaller of the forces. The angle between the force, two forces is 120 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree, 150 degree. 
solution is like this sin theta is equals to p by 2 p is equals to 1 by 2 so theta comes 30 degree and angle between the vector is 90 plus 30 so the correct answer is 120 degree last question the resultant of p and q makes an angle alpha with the p and beta with q so alpha is a less great less than 10 if 10 is p to the power p greater than q p less than q p equals to q and not determined that means infinite solution how we will do if we just take the value of alpha is less than beta then p is greater than q hence this is the correct option and if vector mod of vector p plus vector q is equal to mod of vector p minus vector q then vectors p and q are parallel to each other inclined to at 45 to each other or perpendicular to each other and inclined at 60 degree with each other the correct answer is vector here vector p plus vector q are vector p minus vector q they are mutually perpendicular as shown so for that case hence the correct answer for this question is option 3 now let's move on the next part the resultant of two forces of each of magnitude capital f acting at a point is root to f what is the angle between the vector theta is equals to 90 degree theta is equals to 0 degree theta is equals to 180 degree or theta is equals to 45 degree so the correct answer for this question is a next if the sum of two vectors is also a vector of unit magnitude, the magnitude of the differences of the two units vector is 1 unit, 2 units, root 3 units or 0. So the correct answer for this question is C option. Now subtraction of vectors. In subtractions of vector, the process of subtracting one vector from another is equivalent to adding the negative vector to the first vector like let vector p and vector q be the two vectors as shown in this diagram which i will be shown like soon so let a vector minus q added with plus vector p by the laws of a vector addition the resultant gives the value vector p minus vector q so vector p minus vector q is nothing but vector p plus of a minus vector q what is the mean of that? The mean simply a vector p which have a direction, for example, like north to south. Okay. And uh, the vector q which we have taken the direction south to north means just opposite direction to the vector p. So these kind of things are as to be called as subtraction of a vector. The magnitude of vector p minus vector q is vector s is equals to mod of vector p minus mod of vector q or we can say mod of vector p minus vector q of mod complete. So uh, we know the formula of a mod that is uh, under root p square plus under q square minus 2 pq cos theta. From here we can calculate the value of a s which is under root p square plus q square minus 2 pq cos theta. Tan alpha we know that q sine 180 minus theta divided by p plus q cos 180 minus theta. So tan alpha gives the value q sine theta divided by p minus q cos theta. The laws of vector subtraction. There is some laws which we are taking like first is the vector subtraction does not follow commutative law. That means we can't write like vector p minus vector q is equals to vector p or uh, vector q minus vector p. Okay, this can't be equal. So vector p minus vector q is a not equals to vector q minus vector p. I hope this will be clear. But similarly, like a vector p minus vector q is equals to vector q minus vector p or here. Second one is the vector subtraction does not follow the associative property. As you can see, vector p minus vector vector p minus bracket of a q minus r is not equals to exactly like a vector p minus vector q with r. Resolution of vector means resultant vector. So resolution of vector into rectangular component. Students, in this particular topic, 
what we are going to start like how we can calculate the resultant vector or a combined effect of this component so the given vector can be split up into the two or more than two component such as combine effect of these component is same as the original vector r so this is a vector r the component can be found at any required angle but if they are at the right angle to each other then they are called rectangular components like rx and ry with the angle theta consider a vector vector r is equals to vector of oc starting from the origin o from the rectangular coordinate system as shown in the figure so if i'm just taking rx so rx is a what r cos theta and ry is a what r y sin theta and r is the resultant so draw perpendicular from c which meet at point x and y meet at point p again rx is a nothing but vector oa and ry is a nothing but vector ob they are rectangular component of a vector r along x axis and y axis respectively so by the parallelogram law of vectors vector r is equals to vector rx plus vector ry since we can say that vector r is equals to uh, like rx cap uh, rx i cap plus ry j cap there will be misprint over there this will be i cap okay so cos theta we can calculate rx by r so rx is equals to r cos theta as i told you earlier and similarly we can calculate like sin theta is equals to r y divided by r that means r y is equals to r sin theta so squaring and adding equation 1 and 2 r x square plus r y square is equals to r square cos square theta plus r square sin square theta so r x square plus r y square is equals to we can write over there r square So r is equals to under root r x square plus r y square. Direction of resultant vector is given by dividing equation second to the first. So r y by r x is equals to tan theta means slope. So theta is equals to tan inverse r y by r x. Similarly, in three dimension, we have a resultant vector as given x like a r is equals to rx i cap plus r y j cap plus r z k cap so magnitude of r that means mod of vector r is equals to r under root rx square plus r y square plus r z square and the same direction of vector we can calculate so a unit vector represent the direction of a given vector like vector is equals to magnitude into direction that means vector a is equals to magnitude may a and direction so direction of vector uh, a is a a cap a cap is a unit vector okay so where a is a vector a is magnitude and uh, direction of vector a is a cap so unit vector is given vector divided by magnitude of that vector so unit vector is equals to a cap vector a by a vector divided by magnitude there one more theorem is the lamy's theorem now for the competitive purpose it's important like if three coplanar forces acting at a point are in equilibrium then each force is proportional to the sign of the angle between the other two forces that means f1 by sin alpha is equals to f2 by sin beta is equals to f3 by sin gamma so direction of cosines are things like the direction of a cosine l m and n of a vector are the cosine of angles alpha beta and gamma which a given vector makes with the x-axis, y-axis and z-axis respectively. 
if alpha beta and gamma angle made by a x y z axis and cos alpha cos beta cos gamma are called as a direction cosines so l is equals to cos alpha which is a x by a m is equals to cos beta which is a y by a and n is equals to cos gamma which is a z by a so squaring and adding both the terms so we get cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma which is equals to a x square by a square plus a y square by a square plus a z square by a square which is equals to a x square plus a y square plus a z square by a square or a square by a square which is equals to 1. So finally what we can write like cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is equals to 1 and sin square alpha plus sin square beta plus sin square gamma is equals to 2. Students, I hope you uh, learn the concept and the things. And if you have a doubt in this particular scenario, like uh, how the sin square alpha and sin square beta plus sin square gamma is equals to 2. So what I put cos square theta, we can write as a 1 minus sin square theta. So 1 minus sin square theta means sin square alpha plus 1 minus. Uh, so this from this we can write as a 3 okay and when i shift 3 here so this will becomes minus sin square alpha minus sin square beta and minus cos square gamma is equals to minus of a 2 if we just do common of a minus symbol so we can do solve the thing i hope you understand what i want to do so this is all much about for today's class i hope you understand once again and thank you for watching this video